Thank you. Bhanu Kumar is a technology expert growing with the industry for the last three decades. He is an expert in niche areas like cloud, analytics, internet on things, artificial intelligence and machine learning and digital marketing. Bhanu Kumar is also a part of multiple social forums either as special interest group or executive committee. He is a member and a regular trainer in MMA. Bhanu Kumar is a mentor for entrepreneurs such as YES, that is Young Entrepreneur School, IIT, Hand in Hand Rural Entrepreneurship and a social contributor through NGO participation. Bhanu Kumar is a visiting and adjunct faculty in various educational institutions and universities and is a go-to person for any technology related training or consulting programs. I welcome Bhanu Kumar sir to speak about the objectives of the academy and functional modalities. Good evening everyone. Okay, yes, we talked about what NEC is all about and all that in the beginning. Now, historically, how it started off as Skillcraft being a partner with NEC, they are into the solution being given to the entire rest of the world and all that. So, that is where we were thinking we should probably leverage on that in terms of getting into the specifics on training, becomes, it becomes a win-win solution in the sense. So, the basic motive which, which we tried to start this was, today the industry, as we go by, I'll talk about it, Industry is talking about a lot of this data science, data is becoming a buzzword, a lot of information around the data coming in on one side. On the other side, we are all talking about Industry 4.0 saying we'll have to get ready, things will have to move on with Industry 4.0 coming in and all that. Now, if you really look at the history, Industry 1, though we were the handicrafts people and all that, with British colonialism and all that, we were not really driving it, but we got driven in industry 1.0, 2.0 we got lost. So when industry 3.0 came up in the 80s, that's when India also jumped one level higher in terms of the computer industries with Rajiv Gandhi and Sam Patrita coming in, a lot of things started changing. So we started participating in the industry 3.0 per se, and we started doing a lot of things that moved in. But with 4.0 already starting in Germany, we trying to get ready and all that, we thought one of the things we should look at is to build an ecosystem which can manage this wherewithal in terms of the industry 4.0 because the entire structure of 4.0 talks about three distinct features. One is digitizing the products and services. Two, digitizing the value chains that are coming in within the industry. Three, digitize the customer requirement. So all of it putting together at the moment is hovering around artificial intelligence, machine learning, data science, IoT. So with that in mind, we thought probably we should start somewhere. And that's when we started interacting with NEC, came up with this kind of a curriculum which can get into it. So without too much of ado on the rest of the history, I will get into the specifics. Okay, I'll probably do that. So, one of the things that was a driving factor is the industry trend. The first thing on the industry trend, if you really look at it, at least for 2020 itself alone, if you really look at it, 2020 alone, if you really look at all the features that are looked at, data-driven culture, we are talking about analysis, we are talking about analytics in different flavors, mobile business intelligence, a lot of it revolves around the dumb machines, for want of any other word, I'll call it that way, becoming intelligent. The intelligence has to be given by us. So if we'll have to get into it, we thought, yes, this is one reason why we have to do that. Gartner predicts, from an education institution, student's perspective, Gartner predicts this is going to be the future. They're talking about the different varieties of analytics, natural language processing, talking about data fabric, how commercialization can happen in terms of artificial intelligence, machine intelligence. Now, all of this coming in together, it revolves around the entire industry from a overall perspective is becoming data-driven, basically talking more in terms of intelligent systems, which are basically emerging and are scalable. So that is where this came up. And from a 4.0 perspective, as I was saying, the two flavors that I'm trying to look at here is, on one side, if you really look at it, 
we focus like some of it was rajat was talking about cloud edge computing and all that so somewhere if you really look at it there are large computing models that are available where we'll have to solutionize there are other models wherein we are talking about dynamic data processing alone that has to be done or it could even get into a scenario where what we call as a digital twins the man machine together getting involved into it we were two human beings talking over a period of time it is going to be a human being and a robot talking together or it's going to be fully robo so that's what we call as a digital twin in the it term so we wanted to ensure we are able to build an ecosystem we don't want to be a player in terms of it but wanted to build an ecosystem with that kind of a wherewithal and the backing that comes up from nec so that paved way in terms of building it so we wanted to open it out structure it in a way the moment we talk about big data the moment we talk about data analytics there is a suite of products that are coming in it starts all the way from the basic r python all the way goes on up to hadoops to sparks to quite a lot of it so internally what we tried to do was we did an analysis we did a market research in terms of how things are moving around what are the solutions coming in so we said we will target three sets of people one is the college students two is anybody who wants to make their living into the data analytics field or those people who are looking at shifting into it because there are a lot of these people who go with the alignment of the uh, industry classic example is me 30 years back what was in the industry to what is it today lot of what i did 30 years back is dead and gone so lot of us will also try to align ourselves towards how the industry moves in so we wanted to cater to these three sets of people in such a way that they will be able to attach themselves into this data field per se number one number two at the same time they do not lose their originality in terms of what their expertise is all about which means if somebody is coming from a manufacturing industry versus a retail industry the flavor of that industry should exist but at the same time he or she will be able to get this data so it becomes a value add a plug and play that comes in and we also wanted to reutilize the capabilities of nec there because we are partnering with them so one of the main reasons why we wanted to get that route is and not become a run on the mill course is because with the wherewithal with the support there is an industry backing that comes in our certifications will be with the saying yes this is what the industry is also looking at on one side on the other side we wanted to see how this can extend so that our participants can become future employees of nec or other organizations similar to that as we go by keeping that in mind we brought in this kind of a structure wherein any data science any data analytics whatever we talk about the basic core engine is what is below at the uh, this thing on the slide the white and blue combination basically we are talking about what data science is all about what are the data structures how are we going to visualize what is it going to be done but we don't stop there that will become too theoretical so most organizations today are used to data i won't say most in fact i am not wrong in i won't be wrong in saying all organizations most of us are used to using excel sheets most of us are used to various calculations along excel sheets excel itself has evolved a lot of correlation regression and all that is possible in excel today so what we wanted to do was i don't have to really invest if i want to get into analytics the basis of analytics does not necessarily mean there is an investment i can start with what is existing so we wanted to make that as a core in the curriculum which means anybody wanting to utilize the availability of data for them to make decisions will be able to get involved into it so keeping that in mind we wanted to build the core which will talk in entire what analytics is all about how do i go about why do i need it and then talk about how do i do it in excel after that the rest of the towers that you see on top are more of a plug and play the logic with which we did it is today it is a python or an r or a power bi or a tableau or whatever it is but tomorrow it could probably become a hadoop or it could probably become a spark or it could be something different but at the same time the essence core is the same and i can pick and choose what i want as the industry evolves so keeping that in mind we came up with three distinct towers one is more like a programming tower which is where you have r and python the thought process is either one of them can be picked by a candidate by a participant the idea is if i am more database oriented if i am more into analyzing the data based on it for predictions i can look at a uh, module like an r if i'm more into programming i have done java i have done uh, those kinds of things and i want to get involved into programming per se i can get into a python so either ways both are more or less in terms of uh, the operations from a data analytics perspective more or less on equal pedestal so we said we will give one out of those 
One side of it is analyzing the data. Yes, Excel gives you some charts and all that. But the beauty of the visualization in terms of bringing in a single source of truth, ensuring everybody has the same data source, but has a different view depending upon what they need and all that, comes with a visualization tool. In an analysis, we figured out that top three visualization tools as per Gartner are Microsoft Power BI, Tableau, and then ClickView. Keeping that in mind, the same concept of the first tower, programming tower having two modules, we brought in two modules in the visualization, the top two tools of visualization in the world, Microsoft Power BI and Tableau. The second hidden reason that we are looking at these is more in terms of this alone, if somebody is able to do it, he or she might become a visualization expert. So anybody giving any type of data, they can become visualization experts, like your content writers and all those coming in. These can also be a separate line of opportunity for some of the students. So that was the second reason. So the second, second tower talks about that. And the last tower is by and large a mandatory tower, which we call it the machine learning tower, where we give the overview and concepts around artificial intelligence and machine learning, because that is the essence of the industry that we are moving into. Gone are the days when we said IT industry versus other industry. Today, everybody is becoming a technologist. Everybody needs to talk about technology and all that. So we said we will give this as a tower. So this, to a greater extent, means they are looking at four modules in per se. The first one is the core module. Irrespective of what they take, they will be able to do it. The second one is the programming module where somebody will take an R or a Python. The third one will be a visualization tower, which will be either a Power BI or a Tableau. And the last one is a mandatory tower, which is a machine learning artificial intelligence introduction. This, we structured it in a span of 20, 80 hours. Now, there again, the thought process was we didn't want it to be too long, nor did we want it to be shoot too short. Now, each of these modules, if you really look at it, take a Python. There are curriculum that runs from 10 hours all the way up to 120 hours. <coughs> you take a Tableau, there are odd modules which run from 15 hours, 16 hours, all the way up to 85 hours. So there is a lot that happens on each of it, but we wanted to give a flavor and bring in in such a way that the basic requirements in terms of somebody wanting to get into those details are available so that they will be able to take on from there and then move on. Because God, somebody will have to be really technical in terms of trying to understand everything. As long as they know how to refer and take it forward, I think we are good. So we'll have to basically get them trained in terms of what they need to do. So that was the thought process with which we started doing this. So we decided we'll take the best of it in terms of the most important ones and then get it done. So with that in mind, we thought 80 hours would be a good bet, roughly around six weeks if you're talking about a 10-hour class in a week. Because we are looking at two sets of communities, if you really look at it. One, the working community, and the other one <coughs> is the education community, people in the colleges. Either side, they have their own specifics that have to be managed. Plus, they will have to spend some time here. So we didn't want it to be overbearing. So we said roughly around <coughs> 10 hours a week would be a good idea. So using that, we said roughly eight of 80 hours is a total curriculum with which we'll do, where they first get to understand the big data platform per se, do basic analytics and all that using Excel, then get into specifics in terms of analysis and then visualization, and finally get into the predictions using the machine learning. So this is how this was structured. This you saw in the video, it is more in terms of trying to say, yes, I'm going to be delivering it, not like a training. The biggest difference that we want to ensure we do it with the kind of wherewithal we have from NEC is, some of the case studies that he came uh, brought out can by itself become multiple examples that the students can work on. The multiple real life examples that the student can work on. So we wanted to make it completely experiential wherein we tell them the concept and then we make them work on those aspects which we have already got a solution on. So pick that and make them work on it. So that way what will happen is the student will get a real life scenario, get a real life example. Yes, the data security and other things to be managed. We will scrub the data and all that where necessary. But we said we will still be able to give them the meticulous aspects around a real time environment. So irrespective of whether they are students or employed, ultimately they are all going to be peers when they get into the industry. So all of them will get the same thought process. So one is it's experiential. Two, we also decided we will have it more modularized. That is how the structure was. So each module will have an evaluation. And then obviously any certification will have to have a final evaluation. But unlike other courses, we are not having a project as part of this. The reason is, one of the things is we are looking at this getting enhanced so that they start working into the industry upfront. 
we are having it experiential and project is going to be an add-on depending on situations depending on the batches we will pick and choose in terms of if they get an employment they move on if not we assist them in terms of the projects so that they will start working on the second reason is we wanted to use this more in terms of a sustained model wherein once they get trained they are not dropped they will continue to be attached with us we will have some homegrown mentoring options that are available we will support them when they are industry because one is an experienced people who are moving into this but the other is a student community who need a lot of guidance and not always will the industry will be able to give it so we wanted to bring in those kinds of mentoring options that could be available to them so that they will be able to do it so that was the second reason why we said we will schedule it this way and that also fits well within that 80 hour bracket that we thought will be a average one based on our analysis that is how we decided to structure it and more importantly this came up with an industry experience so it was not something that we put together offline but it came up with an industry experience so we had an analysis done we have the inputs from nec we know what we are doing for nec keeping all this in mind we brought it out in terms of a structure that could be evolved and work on it now having given some inputs on what the course is all about I thought I will also explain as to how this aligns to the industry. It's a lot easier said than done in terms of saying, yes, our, our solution aligns to the industry. But I wanted to give an overview in terms of how we are trying to align it. Now, if you really look at it, all of us know statistics says there is a talent shortage. The first and foremost driving factor is there is a talent shortage. As per one of the studies in 2019, close to almost 97,000 positions were vacant related to data. Now, the other side of the story, the top half talks more in terms of the talent and the opportunity, the bottom half talks about more in terms of the industry. So from a talent perspective, the career growth. Now, gone are the days when we had a hierarchical career growth. A finance executive ultimately retires as a CFO. The, today, a finance executive over a period of time will get into a FICO consultant and ERP and slowly move on to become a CTO also. So with that thing, anybody with the data analytics and all that coming in, anyone who understands data, who has that left brain right brain combination working effectively will be able to succeed so we wanted to give that in such a way that any way you can come in number one number two the opportunities within it somebody can be a bi developer somebody can be a visualization expert somebody can be a full-blown data analyst so there are multiple sequences of modules that could come in so we said we will give that as an opportunity and i did give you some trends and there are other trends which i can probably start rattling around in terms of what the industry trends are which all is aligning towards a lot around augmented analytics, augmented data management, continuous in, uh, intelligence, talking about natural language processing. Now, all of these, one way or the other, is fitted into our curriculum. From an industry angle, yes, industry 4.0, I've already talked about it. Then the industry growth, what is envisaged is there is going to be an increase of at least 62% job opportunities in 2020 alone compared to the previous year, which is aligned to data. Now, that is a huge number that we are talking of in terms of the opportunity. And we are not here to say, okay, I will probably do it. But we are here to say the ecosystem should be available in such a way that these people are readily available for the industry to take it. That is where we wanted to differ. We didn't want to say, I'm training here. I'm running a factory model. Every 10 weeks, there is going to be one resource, 20 resources available. Take them. No. We are looking at it more in terms of the ecosystem being built so that there is a procedural availability with which people will get trained. They will be there, but they will also be mentored. They will be supported end-to-end -end in terms of getting it done with the industry peers that are coming in. And finally, we are also talking about the Internet of Things being focused more on an industry. It is more in terms of not necessarily IoT, beyond IoT, as Rajat was giving some examples in terms of telecoms and others. We wanted to get into a scenario where all of it can be fitted into the ecosystem. And that is how we said we will bring this up. So this is an example where we are saying a resource, normally when you look at it from an industry perspective, a resource when he is hired. Now, let us say, for example, an experienced resource, a mid-level resource is hired. He will take roughly around three to six weeks before he becomes productive because there is some amount of unlearning that he has to do from the previous organization. There is some culture learning that he'll have to do within the organization. Then align to the organization processes and the nuances within which, and then take it up. There will be roughly around three to six weeks minimum time period. A fresher invariably gets a job and starts attending training for at least next six months. That's how the industry has been evolving. So what we wanted to do was, we will make this industry oriented. Now, a couple of things we are doing is, one, we have the NEC concept. 
we wanted to extend that to the other industry. We will partner where necessary so that we will make it more aligned towards the need of specific groups so it can be partnered with various organizations. We have the background of the education institutions with whom we can partner. So we will be able to match both these so that we will compress the overall learning time for this resource when he joins the organization from six months to probably six to 12 weeks. Now, all of us will recognize that we will never ever be able to pull out or this induction, so-called induction coming in because there is a lot of sensitization that has to happen specific to the organization. So keeping this in mind, we wanted to compress it. So any generic trainings, which is not specific to the organization or specific to the domain, we wanted to pull it up into the induction. The rest of it will be automatically done. So that is how we said. So an example, typically a industry, let us say, for example, let us say a service provider organization like an NEC. Typically, they'll have plethora of services. It could be to manufacturing industry, it could be to retail domain, it could be to any other domain as the case may be. So we will create resources who understand data. We will create resources who will be able to work on this particular data. We will create resources who will probably be able to understand the domain. Now, when I partner with the organizations, if they are a manufacturing organization, there could be something related to manufacturing I'll have to bring in. If they are retail related, I will bring in retail domain saying this is how things operate. So we will bring that as a module in terms of package and then give it to them. The second option that could probably have is focus only on analytics, irrespective of who gives the data, what type of data. It's all data for me and analyze. Which means our resources will be ready to understand the data. They will be able to use the appropriate technologies in terms of the analysis to provide the reports. And they are trained in terms of how an industry operates, so they will be able to rattle out the reports coming in. Another scenario that we are talking about is probably a manufacturing organization having a need for analytical solution. Specifics, industry specific domain. So we could look at it in two levels. One is we could probably have some of these trained resources with us, work it out with the organizations as part of the partnership wherein this could be a outsourced work for us. These resources will be trained in terms of doing it. Or as a second option, they can be taken in on contract, work on it and come back. So these could be some of the options that we could take up. So that is another scenario that we are trying to have in our mind, ultimately compressing the overall resource period. It's a tall order. It's a tall order. Not everything is going to happen overnight. So one of the things that we are, because we are trying to change the ecosystem, there is a culture change that is happening. It's not a pure play training we are giving, but we are trying to mold people into a different execution model altogether. So the way we are trying to structure this course is, we will partner with the industry associations. We have discussed this before this session also. Where necessary, we'll partner with the industry associations so that we will deliver this kind of a session to their members on one side. It could be orientation, it could be development, it could be whatever it is. Second, we will partner with the education institutions. And third, we will also partner uh, build the education requirement for the industry based on the industry partners and also the education so that we will try to map education institutions and industries so that they will be able to collaborate to build it but not letting go the other opportunities that are potentially available we will also come up with public batches though the focus is going to be more in terms of industry batches industry alignments and education institution alignments we will also look at public batches that could come in now what is going to be the difference between these very frankly, not much of a difference, but any problem has to be attacked from multiple angles for a solution to come in. So today, there is a dearth of data scientists in the market. There is a dearth for people who are involved into data. So we wanted to attack it at uh, multiple angles, and that's where we brought out this kind of a structure. What next? Well, a couple of things we have already started initiating on. The first and foremost is just because the sign on the dotted line is yet not over, I'll not name the colleges. We have partnered with two colleges. One is a deemed to be university, and one is a premium institution in Trichy. Both of them have already given the go ahead in terms of these courses to be published to them, or these courses to be trained, those resources to be trained by us. So that is already a done deal. They are sending us the signed document, which we'll have to sign and then publish it probably in the next middle of next week, this will be formally completed. So there is one institution in Pondicherry, a deemed to be university, and, and also another in Trichy who have already done it. 
As of yesterday, I'm working with another university in Coimbatore, wherein I'm in the initial discussions, so that we are rolling it out as an elective package across multiple semesters. This is going to be an elective package. Instead of we giving it as a full-blown data scientist, in the college, we'll have to work it out. That is what I said, we are working on an ecosystem, while the base structure is this. So we are working it out in such a way that they will start from the fifth semester, one module each as an elective. So that will be a data scientist elective that will be there. So if somebody completes all those modules, they get this certificate with all of them. Somebody uh, confirms to only one or two of them, we will give them a certificate related to that. So this is also in the offering. This should be done by probably end of this month. So already we have started working with the education institutions. We did have discussions with some of the associations and uh, other uh, premium uh, uh, groups available here in the uh, Chennai as a region. So we will very soon be interacting with them, talking to our peers in terms of some of the industries to build in a partnership model so that we will be able to take this up to the next level. I know I rattled out quite a few things. I'll pause here, open it out for questions if there is any, because this, there needs to be some amount of brainstorming where necessary, which we'll do it on an individual basis if there is a need. But I still want to open it out for any questions if somebody has anything around it. I said if somebody wants it more like an add-on course, as an elective, then I will have to use it, modularize it across various. But the base curriculum, the way we have structured it, irrespective of public batch or this is going to be the same. <coughs> yes, the depth is going to be the same. The reason is I understand where you're coming from, if I can probably state it differently. Will a college student and an experienced guy, will they have the same wherewithal in terms of understanding the depth? So that is where the thought process with which we are doing it is, if you look at the structure, there is a code that comes in. Probably if he is an experienced person, the timeline that we take for the core to be completed may be lesser compared to the college student, but otherwise the coverage is going to be the same. That makes sense? That's what we are looking at. Any other questions, thoughts, comments? Yeah, yes sir. Explain what is artificial intelligence mastery. Okay, see basically artificial intelligence, I will, for the benefit of everybody with due respect to the technologist sitting here, I will probably make it very mundane. I will give an example, very mundane. Now, normally, when a child is born, the child comes with a coin-sized brain, which develops over a period of time. There is a base intelligence. It develops over a period of time by self-learning, by learning from elders, by making some mistakes. Now, that is a normal intelligence. We have six sense and all that. Now, there is no intelligence at all. Let us take these tables and chairs. There is no intelligence at all. But I will have to build an intelligence. So the first step to do it is I'll have to artificially give an intelligence. That is what is artificial intelligence. Then when I give that intelligence, what is it going to happen? I will have to make decisions. Now what do we normally do when a child doesn't uh, uh, get good marks? We say practice, rework on this, get it. Same way when I'm learning, the machines will learn. I will give some fast data using which it's going to learn. But there could be decisions which are not appropriate. Which means it's not wrong. It's probably those scenarios are not yet seen by this machine. So build data around it. So, so over a period of time, that artificial intelligence is mastered to such an extent that the decisions are more appropriate, but never, they are never the best. Because the changes happen in terms of every aspect. So the structuring of our course is more aligned towards building that artificial intelligence uh, space, wherein we, will, we are going to thrive on that artificial intelligence space in terms of the entire IoT concepts or whatever I talked about, wherein AI, ML, all that comes in. So we wanted to call it as somebody can become a mastery on one side. The other side, it gels well with somebody's aim, aim, artificial intelligence mastery. That's how that coin, uh, coining of the term came in. With due respects to technologies, I gave a non-technical example for artificial intelligence machine learning. Sorry about that. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Hmm. Okay. Uh, extension. When this is integrated with the school or institution or whatever it is. Okay, I will probably not directly talk as NEC, but I will talk about the Skillcraft okay. Academy, wherein one of the things we are working with them is this being endorsed by NEC. It's like I have a hotel and if I don't have food in that hotel, a third person will not come and have food there. So <laughs> one of the things that we are anyway talking with NEC is they will have the first option to select someone from this group. Okay. But we don't want to stop there because the requirement is at large and we are looking at an ecosystem and there is only that much that they can take over a period of time. So while yes, the first option of a rejection of a candidate is with NEC, 
these groups will also be opened out to other organizations where they can be placed. There is someone who is already working in terms of building partnerships with other organizations so that over a period of time that will also be included as part of this course. Okay. And the second question is, is there any platform like a center of excellence being provided to an institution in okay. case they want to specialize on it? As Rajat was saying, they have a center of excellence platform that they have which they are open to work with the colleges to build it in the colleges. There is an investment that the college will have to make, but yes, they can do it, which means, anyway, Skillcraft is a person who is going to do it within these colleges as a partner. So what we will do is we will enable, if a college is getting trained in these areas and they have the center of excellence, we will train them in that area so that directly they can get into it. That's the structure we are doing. There is a, cutting the long story short, yes, they have a particular setup for college center of excellence, which is available from NEC, which can be installed in various colleges. Okay, is it floating according to the... Uh, it is, uh, if you are talking about floating as in cloud versus on-premise, yeah, exactly. it is an on-premise solution at the moment, but as things go by, if something has to be evolved, we can work that out. It is at the moment, what they have is an on-premise solution based on whatever they have done as a research, but if things are changing here, there are things that, as partners, we can work together to see how to take it forward. While I don't want to commit anything on that, yes, as partners, there are opportunities where we can discuss, deliberate, and then probably brainstorm and say, yes, this is what uh, is the path we will take. This may not be the path. But at this moment, it, this is an on-premise solution that they have. Rajat, if you want to add, I think I'm on top of it, right? Yeah. <clears throat> yes, sir. Is this course uh, only uh, looked at the IT sector, what they call as the programming, developing, quality, or can any uh, person who is working in any organization, be it finance, accounts, as long as he, as you said, rightly said, if he has the left and the right brain connected, can anybody take up this? The thought process is that. The thought process is that. While the nitty-gritties might vary with certain people being able to live up to this ex expectation and certain people may not be. But the thought, for example, one of the Coimbatore uh, universities that I'm working on, they want this to be given to all the 10 branches of uh, the graduation that they have, which means it talks about aerospace, it talks about mechanical, it talks about electrical, everything coming in. They are looking at it. That's why we are talking about it as an elective. Now, if it is an experienced person who is learning it, obviously he will have the basic mindset so he will be able to achieve it. So that's why we are taking it with a pinch of salt and making it elective for people who are not on the typical circuit branch. But our ultimate goal, basically because, as I said, we are moving away from technologist versus non-technologist. So somewhere this has to meet. So our ecosystem, we are looking at this to be the platform to ensure everybody meets into one. That's what we are looking at. Thank you, sir. Anything else, anybody else? Okay, thank you for your time. Thank you. Really informative. As part of the launch of the course, I request Ratnakar sir to hand over the token of partnership to Rajat sir. Coming from a technological background, Vignesh is a specialist in cyber security and game development with an international exposure. He is also a management consultant 